Aloysius Priscilla was born on 5th June 1873 at Olivia in the Diocese of Tortona, Pavia, Italy. His family was deeply Christian. A pious lad he used to attend church often and to serve Holy Mass with great pleasure. He was quite successful in his studies, especially in mathematics. In 1885, he agreed to join St. John Bosco's oratory. Young Luigi had the opportunity to meet Don Bosco on several occasions and often made his confession to him. It was during his last year at the oratory that Luigi started feeling attracted to the way of life like translations. His budding vocation was tended by a zealous priest, Father Prion. Sometime later, the teenager witnessed the moving ceremony of farewell to departing missionaries in the shrine of Our Lady Help of Christians. He was attracted by one of them who appeared particularly modest and devout. It was then that his future shone bright and clear in his mind. He would be a solution and a missionary. In recognition of his piety and brilliant intelligence, his superiors decided to send him to Rome to attend the Gregorian University. He was a man of wisdom and tireless energy, a real shepherd totally dedicated to his flock. He gave his vicary a solid infrastructure with the seminary and houses of formation, various residences, an orphanage, and old homes. He led by his example of hard work and Christian love. Calistus Caravaggio was born at Kirkne, Turin on 18 June 1903. He came from a family of good, hard-working people where he learned the love of God, of work and retirement. In his childhood, he showed great interest in God. He enjoyed going to church to pray, attended the Salesian Oratory, and study at the Salesian School of St. John the Evangelist in Turin. He already had in mind to become a priest, and in his prayers, he used to ask Jesus the grace to imitate St. Aloysius' purity to become a priest. Christus applied to join the Salesian Society. Although still young, he showed great maturity of thought, prudence in reasoning, and outstanding humility and piety. When he met Monsignor Versiglia in Turin in 1922, he said, I will come and join you in China. After years of waiting, Father Callistus was then sent to the mission of Xu Chao, where the dream of his lifetime finally came true. In China, the field of apostolate of missionaries Versiglia and Caravaggio, things were turning disastrous for the church. Bolshevik forces led by Mao Zedong were on their winning march with their avowed purpose of destroying the church and expelling all foreigners. Bishop Versiglia, writing to the Cardinal Prefect of Propagation of Faith in 1929, had said, we are prepared for everything. A bloody guerrilla war is devastating the unsettled territories of southern China. Bandits, revolutionaries, and dispersed gangs of soldiers are making traveling on land by river dangerous. On February 25, 1930, after Holy Mass, two more joined them. A young boy of 10 and an elderly lady, both bound for Lin Chao, the crew consisted of an elderly woman, her 20-year-old son, and two youngsters. The boat had a flag with the words Ting Chua Tong, which normally was a guarantee of safety and protection for the people traveling in it. The region through which they were to travel was pirate-infested. Pirates took the law into their own hands and harassed the innocent travelers by exacting much money from them at gunpoint. The boat continued its journey upstream, slowly but uneventfully. 
the party prayed the angelus on the 25th at their lunch, after which the bishop was resting and Father Caravaglio was praying the prayer. All of a sudden, about 10 armed men appeared on the bank and in a commanding tone said, Stop the boat! The missionaries did not have that much money. Let us destroy these foreign devils, shouted the pirates. The two missionaries were clubbed with rifle butts on their chest, arms, and heads. The bishop fell first and conscious, and the younger missionary resisted longer. But a little later, he moved them Come on, land! Something strange here. I've seen many die and they all were afraid. These instead were happy. Give a dollar to someone in the village and ask him to bury the corpses. The boat left in a hurry for Lin Gong Hong. Father Gavada sent a telegram to Xu Chao informing the bishop's house that Messenger Brasilia and his companions were waylaid and shot by pirates. On the following day, Father Cavada and Father Lareno came to the spot of the tragedy. They went to the mission of Xu Pin, where they learned that the missionaries were murdered. With the help of the police, the remains of the missionaries were finally discovered and taken to Ling Kong Hao. The mortal remains of Father Carabario were laid to rest at Hosai, in the Church of St. Joseph and those of the Bishop in his Pro Cathedral. At the beatification on May 15, 1983, by Pope Paul II, he said that they were good examples of the gospel, ideal of the shepherd who gives his life for his flock, for a cause of truth and justice, defending the weak and the poor, triumphing for the, for the evil and sin and death, he also canonized the other martyrs of China on October 1, 2000.